Hello students and welcome to a new video from Shoresource classes. In this video I will be solving CAT 2016 quantitative aptitude segment. Okay. So the first question is what is the greatest power of 5 which can divide 80 factorial exactly. So now in this kind of questions whenever you have a factorial structure okay how to do it for example 80 factorial is what 1 2 3 dot 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 80 so now 8 is divisible by 1 2 3 all the numbers still 80 it's not divisible by 1 directly so now the greatest power of 5 so in order to find the 5 greatest power we just divide by this thing is 5 and then again we have to divide with the 5 square and keep on going until and unless the denominator is higher than numerator so we can't go till 5 cube so that is the last 5 so this is 16 and 3 remember that we are taking the whole numbers only and no remainder is considered okay that's it so this is the way to find if they would have given like 7 so we could have done it with 7 7 square 7 cube dot 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 okay first time is done now let's do the second one please allow me to use a different color okay because this kind of online video sometimes becomes so monotonous no pink will be too much let's use red for this one relatively thicker red okay now as uh, in this question uh, charity solicited p persons now this sum is relatively challenging because there are less digits and more alphabets so p persons over the phone who agreed to an average pledge of r okay so total p is simply pr q of these people had pledged on average of s each never sent in pleased amount which of the following expressions represent the percentage pleased money that charity received so what is the amount of money is received by the charity a bit challenging question so the total amount of solicited person p persons each from which agreed to please so the total revenue which is r is p into r total incoming okay and of these q did not send the pleased amount average value of amount not sent and average value of amount not sent let it be s oh it's given sorry it's given as s okay so hence the total amount pledged but not received pledged but not received is simply QS that's a Q number of people okay okay now so with respect to the total amount pledged we can proceed uh, hence the charity received charity received so PR minus the pledged amount so QS so PR minus QS is the amount they have received. So the required percentage is, so the required percentage we can calculate here, 100 into PR minus QS by PR. So you can take it common, 1 minus QS by PR. 1 minus QS by PR. Hence, option D is correct. Now we are proceeding to our next question, question number 3. Okay. So, if P and Q are the roots of the equation x square minus bc plus c, it's a quadratic equation. Then what is the equation if the roots are PQ plus P plus Q and PQ minus P minus Q? So, very simple. If in this quadratic equation, okay, I need to make it smaller. Okay, uh, x square minus bx plus c equal to 0. Let the roots be PQ where P plus Q equal to B and PQ equal to C. Some of the roots and the product of the roots that is given. 
now we have the formula of the quadratic whose equation roots are given so we can directly form that x square minus sum of these so sum of these two will be actually 2p cube plus product of these but remember that in the basic equation p q equal to c here given so sum of the roots is actually we are going to write x square minus 2c okay into x and when we go for these two products you can see pq this will form pq square minus p plus q whole square that's it so this is simply nothing but c square minus b square c is this and b c square minus b square here so we can simply put c square minus b square equal to zero so directly our option is the very first option a is the answer now we are proceeding to the next question now uh, this one is an interesting question this time they haven't given the option this is the new cat style where the, in some of the questions they may give you the option in some of the question they may not okay so there are 70 students in a class anyone who has chosen to study maths elects to do physics as well okay so anyone who goes for maths has to go for so physics so maths tends to physics and but no one does maths and chemistry okay there's nothing common between maths intersection chemistry is actually zero so set theory based question and uh, 16 do physics and chemistry so, so there is something common between physics and chemistry that is 16 all the students do at least one of the three subjects okay and the number of people who do exactly one of the three subjects is more than the number of people who do more than one of the three that's normal what is the maximum and minimum number of people who could have done chemistry only so for that i need to draw a diagram and that look like this obviously this you know maths as you have to do maths so you do physics so physics is the outer one and this is your chemistry this is the common portion so this is 16 okay that's it. that is the basic structure and here is the total total is 60 students and in this area there is nothing there is no one who actually is subjectless that's not possible and this area b this is chemistry this is uh, physics and this is math okay let this area be a this area be c and this area be b a b c okay so simply we can write please allow me to use a different color okay we go this time with yeah this blue a plus b plus c these three area that is a plus b plus c plus 16 there's no area left now that is equal to 60 so simply a plus b plus c 44 after subtracting so the number of people who do exactly one of the three is more than the number of do more than one so a plus b is greater than c plus 16 a plus b is this area only one ones and c are the ones who does it two okay but there is no one who actually does three because there's nothing common between maths and chemistry so we need to find the maximum and minimum possible values of b actually so let's start with the minimum let b equal to zero so if this thing happens, then a plus c equal to 44. So a greater than c plus 16. We could have taken a equal to 40 as well. So c equal to 4. So b can be 0. Okay. Now thinking about the maximum value, b equal to simply 60. So this is b equal to itself 44. Going for the maximum, let me do it in the lower area. b equal to 44 if we take the max b equal to 44 if we take directly then a equal to c has to be 0 that also works so the minimum value of b is 0 and maximum value of b is 44 so the range is 0 to 44 chemistry only okay 
next one we have another question consider the two figures a and d that are defined in the coordinate plane each figure represents the graph of a certain function as defined below okay now let me just uh, write it the functions the question is missed out b i have the questions fortunately so that is t these are the two functions defined below if the area if the area enclosed by a that is this and b a and d is zero which of the following is a possible value of a comma d and the option a is 2 comma 1 option b is minus 2 comma 1 option c is minus 2 comma 3 option d is 2 comma 3 that's it so if the line represents a or where a greater than 0 and a less than 0 are given in the following so if in this particular structure mod x minus mod a we can draw it let me use a different color for this yeah okay this one is for a this is 0 comma a this is 0 comma minus a and similarly for the other diagram is this one where mod y equal to t so there is a possibility this is happening this is 0 comma minus a and this is 0 comma a so under these two circumstances we can see that the area the area enclosed by a and d would be 0 that is in this particular case d less than mod a so in option b what we can see that d equal to 1 and a equal to minus 2 that is d less than mod a so if a greater than 0 then only one of these area enclosed by a and d will be 0 is when d equal to actually 0. So considering all these portions we can only see that option b is the correct answer. Now we are proceeding to the next question. The next question is about the pencils. The total cost of two pencils, five erasers and seven sharpeners is 30. While three pencil and five sharpeners cost 15 more than six erasers. Okay, but why by what amount does the cost of 39 erasers and one sharpener exceed the cost of six pencils? So it's a very old school question based on the idea. So here we have a three based equation. So let me just write the first equation here. If P equal to pencil and E equal to eraser and say S equal to sharpener, so this we can write as equation one. And the second equation is minus 6e that is equal to 15. 15 more, so we can write it like this. We need the value of the following expression that is e equal to minus 6p plus 39e plus s according to the question. Okay, so here we assume that by multiplying equation 1 with respect to x and equation with respect to y and adding we get the equation e by considering the coefficients of the p and d we get by considering stat 1 and 2 uh, the coefficients of p comma e what we get first is 2x plus 3y equal to minus 6 and 5x minus 6y equal to 39. We just easily solve. Solving that will give x equal to 3 and y equal to minus 4. So here we just put the values in here. E equal to 3. And after that we can recalculate. That is 30 minus 4 into 15. So that is 30. 
So here the observed that the coefficient of s is also uh, combined in the same way to match the coefficients of e, okay, of s. So here in that case also like 3 into 7 is 4 into 5 that is also equal to 1. So the the amount by which the cost of 39 indices and one sharpener exceeds the six pencil is rupees 30. That's the answer. Okay, so here trick is form the equation always and the second trick is if any extra statement is there then also incorporate that into main equation. So this is a pattern we are going to apply. Now next question, let me see. Okay, this one is also an optionless question. So here they have said if x to the power 4 minus a, so it's a biquadratic equation. This one is a biquadratic equation we call and has positive real roots, then find a minus b. So how to find it? So here p, q, r, s. Let's just p, q, r, s are the roots of the equation. Let p, comma q, comma r, s are the roots of the equation. So in that case, p plus q plus r plus s equal to 8. Some of the roots, that is this one with a minus. And this happens only if p equal to q equal to r equal to s equal to 2. Okay. So simply p, q, r, s, this thing will be 2. And p plus q plus r plus s by 4 equal to 2. So arithmetic mean is equal to geometric mean. This is possible only when the numbers are equal. So we can simply say that P equal to Q equal to R equal to S equal to 2. So now next part is the product. You can take two products together. P Q P R P S Q R Q S R S that is equal to A. And here that will be equal to A equal to 24 and the second part is pqr now taking three together pqs prs plus qrs equal to b will be equal to 32 just putting the values so simply so after this we are coming here a minus b is 24 minus 32 answer is minus 8 so this one was a bit challenging now we are proceeding to the next question. Okay, this one is uh, will be the last question for this video. In the next video, I will be doing from question number nine. Okay, a regular polygon has even number of sides. Okay, even that can be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, anything. And if the product of the length of its sides and distance between the two opposite sides is one fourth of its area, then find the number of sides it has. So here we apply a simple formula and form the equation just like we did in the last question of scissors and pencils and erasers. So let the number of sides be 2n. As it is even they have said, so number of sides be 2n. Let the length of the side is s. And uh, length of the perpendicular from the center and length of the perpendicular from center to each side equal to P. So since the number of sides is even then the opposite side will be parallel and the distance between any two opposite sides equal to distance between any two opposite side equal to simply the double of it that is 2p and area of the polygon which is a is 2n into sp by 2 that's it so given that 
S into 2P equal to A by 4. So we can write SP equal to A by 8. That's it. So here we can put it and A equal to we get N into A by 8. So N equal to 8 or 2N equal to 16. Simply so the number of sides that polygon has is 16. Okay, that's all for now. Wait for the next video and if you don't want to miss it out, just subscribe it and we'll be doing for all the entrance examinations and their latest forms as well. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you for watching.